Hey beauties, welcome back to Aesthetic Chat with Kiki. As you know, I'm your host, Kiana Gamble. This episode is with Erica Berry. Such a fun conversation to record. She is very honest, hilarious, and I hope you guys learn a lot, so enjoy. Thank you, Erica, for coming on my podcast, Aesthetic Chat with Kiki. I want you to just start out by kind of walking us through your journey into aesthetics, kind of how you got to where you are today. Oh my goodness. That's a loaded question. Do you have some vodka? (laughs) (laughs) I am Erica Berry and I'm a nurse practitioner and I got into aesthetics by force (laughs) because I worked in the hospital. I was the first nurse practitioner on the urology and plastic service in the, in the hospital. And one of my good friends is a plastic surgeon and she's like, you're going to inject. And I was very young and I had no idea what that meant. And I did that probably for about two years in the hospital, which is very different from private practice. Cause you're basically like, have you have really sick patients and then you have cosmetic clinic and then you have cosmetic patients. So it's just kind of all over the place. Like some days patients were dying and then some days I'm like doing a bunch of Botox and filler. So I quit because I hated aesthetics. I'm like, I don't want to inject. I just want to take care of patients in the hospital, which is kind of different from a lot of injectors today. They want the opposite. I am definitely a hospital girl. I loved it. I love bedside being like a nurse practitioner and taking care of operating room patients and PACU and ICU. And then I moved from, that was in San Francisco. I moved to DC and then I just worked at med spas and it was an eye opening experience (laughs) because I was used to working with all men basically and surgeons. And then again, it was like a rough time. It, It definitely was like a two year transition and that's how I got into aesthetics. And now I'm just, you know, living every day by the seat of my pants. Wait, I don't know the acronym (laughs) or the the saying, but I (laughs) some days are amazing. And then some days all injectors can definitely relate to this. Some days I'm like, what is happening? Why did I choose this career path? But yeah, that's, that's my story. Very cool. So I guess my question for you is you are one of the very few that are like, I absolutely love bedside. How is it now not having your hand in any part of, you know, traditional medicine? Does that, do you miss it? I do miss it. I really love the science of things. That's why I think it makes me a good injector. I am a nerd and I love like pharmacology, physiology, and pathophysiology. Like if I understand why a wrinkle is created, it makes me really good because I know how to stop it or prevent it or make it better. Mm-hmm. I do miss bedside nursing. I miss it was very comforting to walk into the hospital and like you're just running your ass off all day long. Like I basically was a nurse practitioner on the on the plastic service. So I was an intern, right? So I like had three consult pagers and my own pager and like running from like sick patient to sick patient, and a crumping patient. And so it was very comforting because you have this team of like 20 surgeons and one nurse practitioner and you're like constantly working as a team. And your all your common goals, like to keep your patients alive and like make sure they're happy, obviously. In aesthetics, I really cultivate that in my own practice, but I have to be honest, aesthetics is sometimes like an eat or be eaten world, and that is really stressful. <laughs> and I've cultivated like my Patreon and a community where I'm like, no, can I swear on this podcast? Am I like, yes, swear? yeah, you're totally fine. I don't, I don't like take bullshit. Like I don't play that game. I have a huge table. I'm like, everyone come eat at my table. I want everyone to be inclusive and I want everyone to play nice together. And I know that's not realistic, but that's what I miss about bedside nursing. We were all there. We're all in the grind together. We're all exhausted working these like 14 hour shifts. And aesthetics is just sometimes you're like, what is wrong with these people? <laughs> Right, right. I've learned a lot about life and I've learned a lot about people through aesthetics because you see your patients going through cheating scandals and divorces and death and grief. And you're supposed to like not only deal with that and their psychology and their body dysmorphic issues, but also like their wrinkles and their volume loss and their jawline issues. So 
I, it's made me a really good mom and a really good wife because I'm very calm when I come home. Like it doesn't matter if the house is on fire or there's a kid throwing up. I'm like, no, everything's going to be fine because I'm here and I'm going to fix everything. But it, it, injectors are a different breed of humans. Like we can, you know, the survival shows like, um, mm-hmm. yeah, like a naked and afraid. Yeah. Like we would win those shows because we just uh, survive on a different level. It's pretty hilarious. <laughs> I love that analogy. I'm a follower of your Patreon. I don't know how you have enough time to really run a kick-ass practice, do your Patreon, do things like this show. You're recording at 8 p.m. right now. Yeah. Like you're busy. So how do you manage putting out so much content? Do you plan like certain days? Do you have someone that really helps you out? You read Atomic Habits, that book. Atomic Habits. About- it's on my list to read. I'm okay. currently reading The Slight Edge. Read it. It's amazing. I definitely, that's my life. Like I, I'm a big believer in, I'm very anti people like doing these crazy diets or like keto or like I'm training for this. I'm working out four hours a day. Like I don't have a social life. So that's number one. I go to bed <laughs> every night. Like literally I'm going to get off the podcast with you and I shut everything down and I get my butt into bed and I'm in bed by 9 p.m. And my lights are out by 9.30. And gotcha. then I don't drink during the week. I am such a nerd. Like I don't do anything. I don't leave my house. Like I literally go to work and I come home. I only see patients twice a week. I see them on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Okay. And then Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I like take care of Jack, my baby. And then I just multitask and I get up at usually around 4.30 a.m. or 5 a.m. And I work in the morning on my Patreon from 5 a.m. till 7 a.m. And then when Jack gets up, I like am with him. And then we go to the gym together and he goes to daycare and plays with his friends at the gym and I do my workout. And then I just literally, there's no bullshit. Like I don't mess around. I think I'm very big into time efficiency and I time block, which is this crazy technique on your Google calendar. Mm -hmm. I'm literally like, okay, for the next 30 minutes, I'm just doing Instagram. Then the next 30 minutes, I'm just doing TikTok. And the next 30 minutes, I'm just doing a podcast and I time block everything. And I don't like deviate from that. It doesn't matter if there's like a really cool show on or a friend asked me out for drinks. Like I strictly just adhere to that plan. And yeah, I don't know. (laughs) Girl, that discipline. I love it. You don't ever slip up ever in terms of like having a little drink even after a really long day? No, because that leads to – it's like the gateway drug. That leads to me like binging a Netflix show. And then I met my husband 10 years ago and he is very much like taught me not to be flaky or not to like let people down. And so when I started my Patreon, I was like four years ago and he's like, listen, if you do this, like you have to do the best, like you have to be the best. You have to like make sure these people like get all their answer, like questions to their answers and like they get their videos and they get content. Like this is a big deal. And I really took that to heart. And I'm like, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do the best freaking job. And I really enjoy it. It makes me, Patreon has really taught me a lot. The questions that they, that people ask me, a lot of the Patreon members are way more advanced than I am. I just like dive deep. And I think a lot of people are so – I do something called beta testing on my patients. I mean, obviously my good patients. But I think a lot of people are nervous. Like they've been injecting for 20 years, but they don't want to try a new recon or try a new product. I'm like, I'll do it. So it's really maybe a better injector. And I just – I let loose. Don't worry. Like I know how to party. When it's <laughs> my night, like, I know how to get down, but mostly it's just, I'm big into discipline and being a really boring mom and it's worked well so far. <laughs> no, that's admirable. Like, well, tell me what I'm working on my discipline. I'm really, really working on it. Talk to you about, so on your Patreon, you, one of the videos, it was cracking me up. So I want you to share this with the people listening. You described what RHA4 is. <laughs> Oh my God. I don't know. Well, RJ4 is very, and this is something that's hard for injectors to, to really grasp. It takes a while, but RHA4 is, is very um, flexible, but it's thin. So it doesn't create like that puffy look. So it is like contour and Voluma, but it's strong, like Voluma, but not puffy. And it just works really well in the lateral zygoma. And that's funny you mentioned that because right now I'm getting a lot of I don't know, pushback that people are like, you can't do that on the lateral zygoma. And I was like, yeah, but I do. And it works well for me. And that doesn't mean it works well for everybody, but it works well for me. And so I think 
that's another thing in, the, in aesthetics. People are like, well, I don't do that. So you can't do that. I'm like, no, just because I don't do something doesn't mean you can't and vice versa. But for me, I use it. I throw it in the temple on the lateral glycoma and it looks amazing. And I also use it a lot in the jawline. And it's funny, one of the higher ups for Revance was like, that. Nah, that's not a jawline filler. I'm like, okay, but I use it in the jawline every day and it's amazing. So it is funny that you can play with fillers. And the only reason I play with fillers is because I'm a trainer. So I think doing trainings, you're thrown into these situations and you have to like run with it. Cause some injectors I train, they're like, yeah, we don't have that product. I'm not going to sit there and be a brat and be like, oh, well I can't train you then. Like I can use anything. I call myself a street rat. Like I really can use anything and make a great result. Cause it's not about the paints. It's about the artiste. <laughs> I compare a lot of things to like gonorrhea too. So that's oh my gosh. <laughs> I do like with patients. I don't see new patients, but when I happen to like do a consult for one of my other injectors and they're questioning their dose, I honestly say it's like it's like having gonorrhea and you're going to the doctor and instead of giving you five days of antibiotics, they only give you one day. Like, do you still have gonorrhea? And then they're like, yeah, I only got one day of antibiotics when I needed five. I'm like, same thing with your Botox dose. You need 80, but you only want 10. Like that's not your dose. Mm-hmm. So I love using that. The gonorrhea is like a great one. <laughs> so funny. I think it says a lot kind of looping back to what you were saying before is that you kind of beta test on like a handful of your clients. The trust that they have in you, because I mean, you're, I'm sure you're fully transparent in the fact that you're like, hey, I'm trying this out. Like, how does that conversation go of, I'm just going to try something? Um, I would say, and again, I'd probably get pushed back on this too, but Wasim will at least agree with me. Most advanced injectors, we're constantly trying new things, like constantly every day. I'll like see something that he does on his Patreon or I'll like do a training with him and he does something that I'm like, oh, I didn't. You, he like, for example, for chin, I take mine from the pre gel and I fan towards the chin and then mental mm-hmm. shadowing. He's the opposite. He goes centrally and then fans out. And so, of course, the next day I'm gonna like, I want to try that. So it's not that I'm beta testing something crazy new, but it's just like a new technique or a new like way of doing something. I'm gonna be honest. I don't go to my patient and I'm like, I'm gonna try this for the first time on you. But like, if they're chill and easygoing. I will like just try it and see. And usually it's not a big deal. If I'm trying a new product, I definitely won't do that unless I tell my patient, hey, I'm trying. Like when I switch neurotoxins, I don't just be like, surprise. I'm very much like, hey, you've been on Botox forever. I don't like that your wrinkles are coming back so quickly. I'm going to try Daxi on you or I'm going to try high dose Juvo. So that is something I'll very much have that conversation. But gotcha. usually I'm just trying new things every day like every single day. I love it. Being innovative, I think is, I think that's probably what sets you apart. I've had a handful of guests on that. I've said, you need to talk to Erica. You need to talk to Erica. So it's a rough time in aesthetics. I think it's hard to be, especially if you're a new injector, it is very difficult. So I give props to any new injector. I honestly say this is my best advice ever. Put blinders on, put your head down, Don't look at the people next door to you. Honestly, invite them out for drinks. Make them your best friend and just play your own game. Like don't even care. I think for me, when I first opened, people were like, well, what are you doing your next location? I'm like, next location? What? Like I can't even handle what's going on right now. And then I went to my husband. I'm like, do I need another location? And he did the math. He did the numbers. He's like, yeah, you can get one, but you're going to have to work at that location too. Like it's going to make your workload double. So I think for me, I'm like, no, I'm going to stay in my own lane and do what I want. If I want to open another place, maybe it'll be in a different city or who knows. But I think keeping your head down is really important in aesthetics because you can be blinded by, well, this person uses this product and this person does this and I should do this. I'm like, who gives a flying, you know, F what's going on? Like do your own thing and you'll be way happier. I'm coming up on my two years of being in the industry and I think it's really easy to get ahead of yourself and it's easy to look at so many other people and be like, well, they're doing this and then you get caught up in everything. So I think that's great advice. Yeah. I mean, that's human nature, right? Like I'm not going to lie. I will look at Instagram and be like, oh my gosh, 
this person did this. Like I should be doing that. And then I really much gut check myself. And I'm like, oh no, girl, you are so busy and you're already exhausted. Like, so I've learned to really say no to things that don't serve me. And I swear by this method of I only see patients twice a week, seeing patients four days a week, and I was losing my mind. So that really works well for me. But I understand that if you're building your book, like you have to work more days. But once you're established, I say, don't go bigger, 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 and more, 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 because that's when you lose control and your quality goes down. So for me, I really am like quality control is so important to me. So I'm like, I want to keep it small. I don't want like... 10, you know, 10 bed spas. Like I'm happy with my one and I'll go from there. And like, maybe I'll invest with other injectors across the country and open med spas that way. But I'm very much happy exactly where I am. I love it. So in our practice, we don't carry RHA or anything. So I haven't gotten my hands on Daxify yet, but you've been injecting it for more than a few months now. What are your kind of thoughts on it? Okay. This is such a touchy subject right now. So it's so smart that you're talking about this because everyone's going to want to listen to this podcast just for this one thing. So I could be like, go to minute 17 um, or 18. Listen, I love Daxi. Daxi has, Daxi and Juvo have really changed my practice because I'm able to do really cool things with them. And I'm not saying you have to like carry those two neurotoxins, but for me, the price point and what it does for my patient is kind of insane. I'm going to be honest too. I don't, I've only been using Daxi since September. So I don't know why. I don't know if it's the peptide. I really don't understand why I have such incredible results, but I have this result where the wrinkle is literally gone and I, and I know it's because it's the dose, like dose equals duration. It really helps me with a lot of my acne scar patients. And I have a huge Asian population and Hispanic, and it really helps with like masseter reduction and kind of remolding the face, which people don't realize like you can do that with neurotoxins. So it's a lot of like mental shadowing work, DAO work, platysmal band work, which helps with jawline contouring. So in the end, I don't have to use a lot of filler, which is always like kind of my goal because I don't like the filler kind of puffy face look. I don't know why it's so good. Longevity wise, I hate talking about that because that's like where people are like, but it doesn't last six months. I'm like, yeah, well, Botox doesn't last three months. It's not about longevity for me, but yes, I'm getting probably about five months out of my, I see my Daxi patients every five months. Okay. Full movement around four or five months, just like my Botox patients have movement around three to four months, like the way I dose myself. So it's just different. It's really cool. And it's fun for me because I'm like, I'm obsessed with neurotoxins by far my most favorite treatment. And I just, I love math and I love doing it. But if you don't have Daxi, is it something to be like, oh my God, I don't have Daxi. I can't, I'm like, it's okay. Like if you don't have Daxi, it's not a big deal. You can play around with high dose Juvo. Juvo is something that I've really been, Audrey Rose got me into Juvo and I freaking love it. It's something about the precision both with Juvo and Daxi, I don't experience a lot of frontal heaviness. Okay. Because of that because I'm like doing more in the crows or more in the in the depressor muscles, like the corrugator. I think working with Daxi and being one of the first injectors doing that, I really go low in the corrugator and that's changed my game because I really have a lot less heaviness in like the medial portion of the forehead because I'm going so low in the corrugator. So I love it. Like I, and I, and people are like, what it doesn't last six months. I'm like, I don't like care because I tell my patient, especially my patient with a lot of movement, I'm giving them realistic expectations. I'm like, listen, you're going to start to have movement back in four months. And that's completely okay. That does not mean you need retreatment. That just means the dose and the duration is different because on the frontalis, I'm not going to pound in 40 units. So they're going to have more, more movement faster versus the corrugators and Proceris are going to be very frozen for about four months. Gotcha. Do you have experience injecting all the neuromodulators on the market? Yes. I still am an AMI trainer. I'm a gain trainer. I love Botox. I love Dysport. There's room for all of them. I always tell business owners this. If you're big Galderma practice and you do a shit ton of Sculptra, a shit ton of lift, define, refine, classic, kiss, contour, please do a lot of disport because that makes sense for you, right? 
And for me, all of the things I can do, I can do with Dysport, I can do with Botox. Same thing. If you're a big Allergan account, please do a lot of Botox because that makes sense for you financially. Your patient's not going to... Do I love Daxi? Yeah, I, I, I do. But like, should, could I still do really cool things with Botox and Dysport? Absolutely. I think it's good to use all of them. With that said, if you're a smaller practice, don't run out and get every single neuromodulator on the market. That's a financial nightmare. Don't do that. So I don't know. It's, I'm sure I'll get a lot of hate for that, but I really believe in... Same thing's wrong with our country. <laughs> it's okay to have different opinions. If you're an injector and you don't like Botox and you like Dysport instead, good for you. That's amazing. Like That's your opinion and that is your truth. That doesn't make you wrong. And same thing with fillers, same thing with like political things. It's okay for people to have different opinions. I think in America, though, we have a big issue with that and we can't let it go. And and social media makes it 10 times worse because people will say, like for me, I'm very honest in my captions. I'll say, how many syringes, what I use, because I want my patient to have realistic expectations when they come in. And I think people are like, well, I don't like Voluma. I like Lyft. I'm like, they're the same thing. Like technically they're the same thing. So it's okay for you to like one thing and for me to like another. Yes. I think that you're making great points. I really like how I think honest and transparent you are about things. The fact that you're a trainer, do you get, do you get a lot of issues with speaking your mind? Um, I did in the beginning especially Patreon because people would screen record my videos and send it to their reps. Cause I get it. Cause you become friends with the reps and they're like, well, Erica says she doesn't like lift. I'm like, no, I just, I don't like the freaking syringe. It sounds like a queef. Like, <laughs> it sounds like a queef. Oh my God. And there's nothing wrong with that. I just don't love it. And yeah. Then, I, I, an amazing product, but I like Voluma. I love the syringe. I love how like it, I don't know. I just, there's nothing wrong with lift. Absolutely. It's a great product. I love the shit out of kiss and contour and I'm a sculptra. Like I love all of the Galderma portfolio, but mm-hmm. people would get upset. And I was like, listen, I'm giving this Patreon to injectors that live in the middle of nowhere. Can't make it to trainings. They just had a baby. Like this is what I'm doing. And I'm going to be honest on it. And you can't get mad at me. If that means you don't want me to train for your company, I understand. But I have to say Galderma is very chill with me talking openly about everything. Um, Allergan, same thing. Like they haven't given me a hard time. Also, I don't like listen to the noise. Like when someone's like, oh, my rep said that you said this was wrong. and I don't listen to it. I'm like, okay. And I just tune it out. I don't check my DMs at all. Um, I have a brand manager that checks all my DMs, so I don't see anything hateful. Um, I just, I don't want to see it. I'm one of those people like ignorance is bliss for me. I don't want to hear anything. So if someone hates me, I'm like, I don't want to hear it. Like, don't tell me if I did something wrong, I want to hear it because I need to change my behavior. But if you're just saying that I have a man face, like, I don't want to hear it. (laughs) I love it. I, I love it. Great. Yeah. Honestly, perfect. So my question for you is with everything that's currently happening with happening within the industry, like where do you hope the industry is in five years? Okay. Well, I think there's going to be a big awakening in aesthetics. I'm thinking in the next two years where people are going to wake up and see how expensive things are. So I think a lot of things will be changing towards like Evelis and a lot of Galderma stuff. I think a lot of Revant stuff. I think people are going to be like, wow, like biosimilators, I think are going to be really big. I think IV infusions, health, semi-glutide, Ozempic. Again, I'm not talk about Audrey Rose again, but she like is my guru. She's kind of like, I go to her, she's just a badass. And she has been in weight loss forever. And I was like, who cares about weight loss? Just diet and exercise, diet and exercise. And then seeing how much that's really changed the aesthetic landscape and how important it is for weight management, health, type two diabetes, longevity, everything. Like it's really, it's just, I think, I think that's where aesthetics is heading is towards wellness and the holistic everything. It's just not shoving filler into your lips or shoving filler into your cheeks or shoving Botox into one area, it's going to be like full face neurotoxin, semi-glutide, health, wellness, NAD infusions, mm-hmm. uh, ultra, hyperlute radius. I think that's really where 
the world is headed. And I think it's really cool. I think it's going to be rough though, because more mid-levels are going to be owning their own practices. And I think people freak out like, oh my God, we're so saturated. Absolutely not. The aesthetic landscape, there are so many needed trainers, so many needed injectors. Like I think it's just we need to stop being so like, oh my God, this person's opening up here. It's like, no, let's like be friendly and open, like encourage people to open their own med spas. And so I think that's where it's headed, which is good. Exciting. I think it's nice that we're headed towards a more holistic approach where it's less filler. It's more doing, having your body do things for you. Yeah. And I think that's where I see a patient that eats well, exercises, doesn't smoke, doesn't drink a lot, stays away from the sun. I'm like, your filler results are going to be so much better than if you drink every day, you smoke a pack of cigarettes, you're in the sun. Like obviously your, your results are not going to be as good. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that's where it turns. I'm excited. I think aesthetics is going to be huge. It's already a billion dollar industry. I think semi-glutide is really just thrown everyone for a loop. And I think that's going to be huge. I think education on semi-glutide is really important. And yeah, I'm really pumped. I cannot wait. I think neurotoxins and filler are becoming very, I don't want to say affordable, but obtainable for people. Even people that are making not amazing money or that are students are like, yeah, I'm able to get Botox every four months and live a comfortable life. And I think 50 years ago, it was only available for the super rich or super famous. Now I love it that you could start early enough, have preventive Botox and realize I don't really need a lot of filler. So I think that's huge. So are you injecting Ozempic and managing kind of weight loss for patients in your practice? Um, not yet. We started the process through Audrey Rose. That's I'm actually doing a webinar with Audrey on March 14th because I think it's cool to have a webinar from like this master, this guru. And then for me, I'm a student and I we're taking everyone through protocols, safety, efficacy, ethics, how we order it, where we order it from, how we dose it, follow up, continuation of care, diet fitness, like everything, because I was like, how hard is it? It's just like Botox. You shoot people up and you're good. And like, oh no, you have to dose people correctly. You have to do like weekly follow-ups. So we are starting the process hopefully in March, but definitely is not easy. It takes time. Right. That's why I feel like it's a little bit scary that so many people out there are kind of just picking it up and thinking, oh, I can just inject it versus like, are they really managing the care of that patient? I think that's, yeah. And I think it's such a great lesson for everything. Cause I, my patients are so like loyal to me and they come back to me and they fly to me because they're like, Erica, you come in the room and you sit down and you really ask me what I want. You explain things to me and you don't just shove things in my face. And so same thing with semi-glutide, you can't just run in the room and shove something in someone's body and then leave. You have to go through all, like it's called informed consent. And a lot of injectors don't even know they need to do it. I'm like, informed consent, you have to, every single time, every single procedure, explain to your patient what to expect, what's going to happen, what they need to know, what they can do, what they can't do, when they need to follow up. Like I use Shakira, her sheets, I've shown them on Patreon before, but those consult sheets, they are amazing because my patient has a whole year plan. And when we do semi-glutide, they're going to have a whole year plan because that's what people think, oh, I can lose 10 pounds and come off of it. I'm like, "Uh uh-uh, it doesn't work that way. It's sometimes a lifelong thing. Are you prepared for a lifelong injectable medication every week of your life? If you're not, then you got to think hard about this. So that's the same thing with Botox and filler. Are you prepared for bruising? Are you prepared for swelling? Are you prepared for ptosis? Are you prepared for eyelid heaviness? Like you have to make sure you are. But a lot of injectors, it's scary. Especially when you're new, it's scary to say that. Absolutely. I think that's an important point though. Last question for you is, do you offer threads in your practice? And yes or no, what are your thoughts on them? Okay. So yes, we do with Sheila Surdu. She's injector Sheila on Instagram. She is my queen. She actually trained with me and I was like, hi, I need to be paying you money to train me because she's just so incredible. She has years and years of experience on me and she does PDO Max threads. I love PDO Max thread as a company. It's 
owned and operated by a woman who's Geo, who's like the most incredible human on earth. Her son is actually in aesthetics as well. His name's Ryan. And, and I just really trust them and love them. And they're very honest. And I love, I, I believe there's a space for everything. I believe there's space for surgery. I believe there's a space for threads. Are threads for everyone? Absolutely not. Do threads are they like a facelift? No, absolutely not. And Gio will be the first one to say that. Just like I talk about the eight point lift. It's not a facelift. Sheila is a badass and she really understands threads on a different level. I do not do them. I'll do someone's eight point lift. I'll do a consult for threads, but she does all of our threads. I was trained on threads by Gio probably like four years ago or three years ago. And I was like, yep, not for me. <laughs> I just knew right away. I was like, this is not for me. Like I, I love it. I love them, but it's just not, it's not in my wheelhouse. I'm a contour girly. I'm a neurotoxin girly, but I don't do any laser. Our laser nurse practitioner, Kelly does all of our CO2. And then Christina does our like Morpheus, Annie and Melissa too. So they're the Queens. I don't even, I do, I train on Morpheus. I speak for Morpheus, but I do not do the Morpheus patients. Christina is a guru. So I think you have to find your niche. And this is another thing they don't talk about in aesthetics, I think you're expected to do everything. Do not do everything. You cannot, just like a general surgeon, they have to do a lot, but they still refer out. A plastic surgeon only does plastics. Urology only does urology. Like you have to pick your favorite things that you really excel in and then refer out. And people are like, well, I don't want to lose my patient. I'm like, yes, but you cannot be an expert in everything. Like it's impossible. So mm-hmm. I think it's really important people realize that like, I can't be an expert at everything. I love my noses or I love my lips. And then I'm going to refer out my tear troughs or whatever that you do not excel in. I think that's a great point. You've already given those that are listening really, really great advice. So my final question for you is, is there any advice or anything you'd like to let people know that are listening that you think that is important for them to know? Chill the fuck out. (laughs) Just take a breath. Everything is going to be okay. I actually just posted about this. I think the majority of the patrons that text me with issues from their patients, I think they don't take good before and after photos. And I will, I'll say like, show me a before. And then I line up the before and after. I'm like, so you see the before, you see the after, see how much better that person's eyebrows are, but they're still asymmetrical because they will always be asymmetrical. And I think it's because when you have a complication, you tend to freak out, which I do too. I get it. But you just have to like take a breath, take five minutes, go for like a run then collect your thoughts, gather your data. It's just like a detective. Like when someone's murdered, they don't just freak out and like throw their hands up. They like gather the evidence, they do their investigation, then they can figure out who who committed the murder. So that's what I do when I have a complication. I'm like, who murdered this person? Who murdered this eyebrow? And then I think about everything, plausible evidence, asymmetry, patient, reconstitution, neurotoxin. Was it me? Was like, you have to like, just chill out. The patient's alive. That's why you never inject anyone crazy, mean, threatening, or body dysmorphic at all. Like you, you can't You have to say no when people are not realistic and they'll ha- never have an issue in your life. Then, then you can like work with everything. Even I had a full ptosis back what was in October, my patient was so chill. I was freaking out more than she was, but things are going to be okay. Just don't inject when you don't feel comfortable. Just say no. I tell my patient, I will only inject you if you're super excited. I never inject anyone nervous. I never inject anyone unsure. I'm like, listen, I can come in early for you. You don't have to do anything today. I want you to go home think about it. I'm going to go home and think about it because it's my decision as much as it's theirs. We're in this Mm -hmm. together. We're not, I'm not going to do it if I don't feel comfortable and you're not going to do it if you don't feel comfortable, but go slow, take a breath, chill out. There'll be another day. It's going to be okay. Wonderful advice. So tell people where they can find you both on Patreon, Instagram, all the, all the social handles. You can find me at Injector Bunny. Oh, also Injector Insider, that's what that's the consult sheets I m- mentioned for Shakira. And Patreon is Injector Bunny as well. Thank you again, Erica, for taking the time to chat on Aesthetic Chat with Kiki. 
I want you all to know that she is actually recording like 8 p.m. her time after a long, busy day. So I'm so grateful to all the guests that choose to come on the podcast. They obviously aren't paid. They're doing it out of the goodness of their heart. And every person that I get to interview, I learn so much. So honestly, that's kind of why I keep doing the podcast is because I learn a lot and then I can just share that knowledge with all of you. So again, thank you all for continuing to listen to Aesthetic Chat with Kiki. You know where to find us on Instagram. It's at aesthetic.chatwithkiki. My aesthetic Instagram is at aestheticnurse.kiki. Aestheticnursekiki.com has, you know, textbook recommendations, future events that are coming up, the podcast, even some fun apparel. So continue to check out the website for new updates, new apparel, that kind of thing. But until next time, beauties, bye.